Hey, it's a great day for skiing. It's winter, it's early 2024, but I'm not here to talk about skiing. I'm here to talk about how to ride a bike in the winter, flip the season upside down. We're here in Vermont. I'm gonna show you the tips and tricks that I go through in order to get out and enjoy, embrace, or at least tolerate riding in a winter in Vermont. Here we go. Hey y'all, so here we are wrapping up a ride, which is basically gonna be a three-part series in this video. It is gonna be quick, so don't you worry. The first part is about the clothes that I ride, the second part is the bike that I ride, and the third part is how I clean up my bike so I can get inside, get refreshed, get warm quickly as possible. So, this is also to answer the questions of like, hey Ted, do you use studded tires? or how do you keep your fingers and clothes and body and, and face and everything else warm? As well as answer questions about my bike, how do I keep the clothes clean? Because look, I just rode two and a half hours and I'm spiffy and clean and, and happy as a clam. So, let's begin. All right, similar game I play with Hazel. We're gonna play a game of head, shoulders, knees, and toes in order to go top to bottom about the clothing that I use to stay warm. So, this is not a sponsored video, but I am sponsored by Velocio. so, all the clothing is Velocio. To begin, I have the winter cycling cap. Now it's recently been redesigned. I absolutely love the new design. The previous one didn't fit me as well. This one is amazing, keeps my ears nice and warm, keeps my head warm, and it's very sleek under the helmet, so it's not like a big bulky thing that you could be concerned about. Second, this is the signature collar. They have two collars. They also have a much warmer one that I wanna say is a Merino 210 that uh, is one that I air on if the temperature is dropping down, let's say into the sub 25, sub 20 degree range. Going back here, this is a set of Sun God Eris sunglasses. It's supremely light. Secondly, it's uh, photochromic lenses. So these, if it's super dark, they're gonna begin um, being pretty clear. And then over the course of the day, as the sun comes out, as you can see right now, it's actually quite bright. I have great visibility and the lenses change. So this is great for this time of year when the days are quite short and you need something that's gonna be changing throughout the day. These are a wonderful set of shades. Now, truth be told, what I'm wearing is the same thing here when it's 35 degrees and a little bit spitting precipitation as if it were I don't know, again, down to that 25 degree range, below 20, I might be wearing a slightly warmer base layer, but I have a long sleeve base layer, a basic merino wool, so it works to keep the warmth in regardless of precipitation, regardless of uh, how much humidity I'm creating on the inside. And then this is the signature soft shell jacket. Signature refers to something that Lochia really wants to put their name on, put their name behind. Uh, this amazing piece, it's got some great Water repellency, it's not fully waterproof, but in a day like today where we saw a little bit of rain, a lot of fog, it was snowing a little bit. Uh, I mean, I'm warm as toast, to be perfectly honest. The Zero gloves, these are warm and cozy. If it's absolutely freezing, then I'll put the bar mitts on the front of the mitt, uh, on the front of the handlebars, that's gonna protect them from wind. But my hands are warm as toast. And then Alpha is something that they also have in a similar jacket called the Alpha jacket which has this soft merino, mm, fluffy interior, which is pretty darn amazing. But I don't need that now. That's something I use when it's super duper cold. Here are my thermal tights. There's the minivan, here are some thermal tights. Big fan of these. Um, oftentimes I have the utility tights, which are awesome because then you can store stuff on the side, some food, some nutrition, some tools, your phone, easy access to all of those things. Um, the zero tight is one that I use when it is absolutely frigid. That's when it's down in the teens and below. But this is just the standard tight. And then moving down to the zero booty. Now what you see here is obviously quite a bit of sand and grit and slime. That is the only part of my body, okay, save my shins, that have seen quite a bit of exposure, but conveniently the zero booty has a great deal of protection from the horrible elements. So yeah, there's a little bit of spray coming up from the tire. 
largely minimal as a result of something we're gonna talk about shortly. Um, but my feet are warm. And the only other thing to notice is something that I'm gonna talk about in the interior. So that's a zero booty. The rest of it is kind of like a hamburger if it's super duper cold. You'll have a booty, a shoe, a sock, my foot, the sock, the shoe. On top of my shoe, I will put one of those chemical toe warmers and then I'll do the zero booty on top of that. So the whole crux of that arithmetic is the chemical toe warmer outside of your shoe, but inside the booty. So now that you've seen what I am wearing, head to toe, head, shoulders, knees and toes, Let's take a look at the bike. Unless we're gonna look at me cleaning up my bike. We'll see how the order of operations goes. All right, you finish up a ride. You're kind of soaked, a little bit head to toe, whether or not it's precipitating or you're sweating or whatever. You're gonna to wanna to clean your bike as quickly as possible so that you can get back inside, get a nice meal, get a shower, and be happy and ready to go ASAP. Furthermore, you don't wanna just put your bike against the wall or in the garage or whatever, because the next day you see your bike, it's gonna be completely covered in rust and, and, and you're just gonna be in a very bad mood. So, here's my quick tips for cleaning a bike ASAP afterwards. Let me point out, this is a very unintentional ad for my friends over at Home Depot. Home Depot does not sponsor this podcast, I mean this video cast, however, if they want to, I accept your uh, royalties. Anyway, everything you see here is stuff that I have gotten at the Home Depot. Beginning with, and the keynote item, is the Ryobi One. This is a 700 PSI pressure washer. It is battery powered, courtesy of this bad boy. Ryobi One refers to this battery system. This battery is something that you can power your weed whacker, your, your jigsaw, your, your uh, brush cutter, I mean anything. It's amazing how many things they do, including this amazing pressure washer. I saw they had a previous model of this thing that had 300 or 350 PSI, and I was like, that's kind of lame. That's basically putting your thumb on the end of a hose. So when this came out, I put it on my Christmas list, and I am very grateful to my father-in-law who got this for me. This is an amazing item. Highly, highly suggested. Next, you want some pretty intense rubber gloves. You get your five gallon, six gallon bucket. You get your utility sponge, which you're gonna put my hand into in a minute. But first up, just get her going and spray the bike down. There is a tiny bit of lag in this thing. No lag. There's the lab. Stand by. Spray one side. Do your best to avoid smashing water into the bearings. Any mechanic would cringe if they watched me do that. Spray the other side. Get yourself your nice brush. Oh, let me talk about the Ryobi again. It comes with this. There's a variety of different ways to get access to your water. This is like a 15 foot long hose. And then with this handy filter on the end, you can be putting it into a pond, into a pool, into a bucket, whatever you want. Or hook it up straight to a hose. It's sweet. Get yourself some soap. Clearly low on this gallon of soap. Time to go to Costco. Brush her down real quick. At this point, your toes, your fingers might be getting a little chilly, but you're already feeling that warm shower. Hit the rims, hit the derailleur, the frame, clean off your chain rings. Other side. Clean off the cranks. Rims once again. I like to clean my rotors because if your rotors are filthy, much to the chagrin of probably 50% of the viewers, if your rotors are filthy and they start to corrode, uh, then you basically have to be changing your rotors every two weeks in weather like this. So I like to clean off the calipers, clean the rotors, Rinse, rinse, rinse. What did I do? That was realistically 40 seconds. 
hit it again. There are three settings. There's a low, medium, and high. Needless to say, I'm always in high. Similarly, there's a 15 degree turbo or rinse setting. Rinse is kind of lame. I'm often in turbo, which is sort of like a typhoon of power. There's that lag again. That's the only drawback. Sometimes there's a lag. Go again. Now, if you're feeling really up for it, highly recommended, go inside, take a rag to the chain, back pedal on your chain, dry it off, go take your shower, come back down, and then lube your chain. Your bike will be spiffy, rust-free, corrosion-free. You're gonna be a very, very happy camper. Bonus points, wash your <laughs> wife's bike. Film crew here is my wife, who is suggesting that I should wash her bike. And given that I'm actually kind of warm because it's a balmy 36 degrees right now, I might go wash her bike. <laughs> but there you have it. <laughs> bye Thank bye. you. All right, I lied. I said we were gonna talk about the bike, but then we went and cleaned the bike. Now I'm gonna talk about the bike itself. So, what you are looking at is a Cannondale Synapse One RLE. There are three things that I really keynote about this bike. One is the tire clearance. That allows big tires and it allows fenders. I will talk about the fenders in a little bit because that is actually not one of the keynote things. Two, the gear ratios. Being that this is a road bike, call me a traditionalist, I, as much as I love one by, this is a two by setup. I have a 5037 front paired up with a 1036 rear. So almost with a one to one ratio. Um, not that you're gonna be grinding up any massive climbs this time of year, but it is really nice to have that kind of gear ratio. And three, this is the Cannondale Synapse One RLE with SmartSense. So what this battery here is doing is powering the front light and rear light and the rear radar. This is a Garmin Varia radar. So on my, uh, on my Garmin up front, on your cycling computer, it'll tell you if there's a car coming especially this time of year, on a cloudy day, on a foggy day, on kind of a gross day. I feel so much safer, so much happier having that system on my bike. Obviously, I'm in a lucky position that I have a winter bike and I have a summer bike, so not everybody's gonna go out and get a new bike, but the future is with a system like this, a single battery that is controlling so many different features of the bike. So, as I mentioned, and absolutely love, these are freshly installed Rene Hair Cycles fenders. Now, I've put a lot of fenders on my bikes in my day. They're, these are hands down the best fenders as a result of a couple different things. One, the full coverage. So going from, what's this? Nine o'clock to four o'clock on the rear. Similarly, you're going from, oh, I'd say you're about one o'clock to seven o'clock down here in the front. The amount of water that is spraying up over the front is nil. The amount of water spraying up here on your feet is nil. Also courtesy of this wide angle thing at the bottom of both fenders. Super cool system that collects so much water and does not allow it to go splashing up on your feet, on your butt. One thing you'll notice is that my clothes are remarkably clean here at the end of a filthy ride. I absolutely love that. The other part is they're aluminum. All metal parts between the stays that go out and place the fender in position. Metal here, metal here. Incredibly light system, but incredibly rigid so that it doesn't go clanging around, banging around your bike. I've used a lot of plastic fenders in my day, and holy moly, this is just a game changer. Obviously, this is not gonna be for everybody because you need to have a bike that has eyelets, which is one thing that's great about this Cannondale Synapse. 
um, eyelet here, back here, down yonder, here. Pretty amazing setup. I can't recommend it enough. Check out Renee Hurst Cycles Fenders. They have a whole bunch of color options, a whole bunch of different aesthetics, a whole bunch of different ways to get, get set up. They're amazing people over at Renee Hurst. Check them out. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. And lastly, let's talk about hydration. As you know, I'm dyed in the wool with Untapped. It doesn't hurt that I co-own the company, but one thing that I absolutely love is hot maple aid on a cold day. So if you put hot water, hot drink mix into your uh, water bottles, they're gonna get freezing in a very short period of time. But not when you put a vacuum water bottle with hot water in it and drink mix. So in here you have hot ginger maple aid. In here, believe it or not, is a hot grape. So this one is gonna get cooler considerably faster. So I'm sipping on this one, but as soon as this is out, I take the piping hot, still boiling water and put it into here. That is the hot brand new grape maple aid. Um, it's extraordinary. I'm not just saying it because I, I co-own the company. I'm saying it because it's extraordinary. Oh, here's another one for you. These are the brand new Arondo grade. 700 by 31 tubeless compatible tire. Um, I, this is the most narrow tubeless tire that Rene Hurst makes. And then this time of year, I have no qualms running their endurance casing. Uh, just a little bit more protection. I don't want to be on the side of the road changing a flat. Staying rolling, staying with air in the tires. So just how cold is it? I don't know. I could probably go inside, but you know what? I gotta go wash Laura's bike right now. Um, it's these little tricks that allow me to get through a winter, to get through a day like today. I love riding inside too, to be perfectly honest. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be doing a four hour day inside because it's gonna be pouring rain the entire day and about 36 degrees, whereas today was just a little bit of precipitation and that kind of temperature. So I got a four hour trainer ride. I'm gonna be on my Saris trainer and my MP1 motion platform. I don't know. I think it's time for a meal and a shower. Thanks for watching. Over and out. Bye bye. Car back. Game on.